I'm in Livingston today at the Wyoming Port of Scotland. Uh, the reason I'm here is uh, that uh, the wine importers have, are, are working together with a charity called Head Scotland. Uh, not as bad as it sounds, um, but we'll, uh, we'll find out from Billy Bell, who's the managing director and is standing next to me, uh, what it's all about. So, Billy, uh, right. what are we doing here Peter, today? Right, well, thanks very much, first of all, for coming along. Um, well, Head Scotland is the Hospitality Industry Trust, which is really hotels and restaurants. Now, they have a charity, um, they make uh, very, very good opportunities to students to go abroad to study their arts and bring it back, hopefully, to Scotland to perform in restaurants. And as a wine importer, what we're doing is we're making a contribution of a pound a case for certain wines, or hits wines as we call them, um, towards the charity. But I believe it's not just that, Billy, you're doing something personally as well for history. Well, I, I am, I am, I am. Um, you, you can't actually expect them to go up the top of Kilimanjaro to have the highest ever burned supper without a piper on board. So I volunteer to be that piper. And uh, so I'm going up Kilimanjaro with the team uh, from Hits Scotland who hope to raise a fantastic amount of money. And I promise that I will pipe the haggis in or out or whatever you do on top of my mountain. Fantastic. That's very good to hear. Out of the selection that you've put together for Hits Scotland, Billy, I think we've got six whites, six reds and one rosé, is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, the, uh, the wines that we've chosen, in fact, are all designed as being good quality banqueting wines. Okay. I mean, because obviously hotels, restaurants who want to support the charity um, through additional wine sales um, are looking for products that will have a turnover. Yeah. So therefore they have to hit a price point. So we, we've chosen good quality, but uh, in the middle price bracket, Peter. Okay. Right, Billy, so we've got uh, the Alumba Viognier yeah. to start with, uh, one of the wines. So um, I suppose let's, uh, let's, let's pour it and let's like. see what it's about. Uh, Viognier is, is one of those great varieties that you'll find in, in the south of France and the Rhone Valley in particular. So, Billy, where's this from? Well, this is from Australia. Yolumba, of course, are uh, one of the big top Australian wine producers. Um, run by Robert Hill Smith. It has a number of fantastic vineyards, absolutely top, award-winning vineyards. See well, what you think about this, yeah. the acidity and everything. A lovely fresh nose anyway. Superb, yeah. Well, I can tell you, this is not flabby, so it's not one of those. Um, it's incredibly fresh, but at the same time, it feels really full in the mouth. It's not a it's not a lightweight wine either. I think it's got a really nice balanced acidity. Good food wine. Yeah. It, I mean, a wine designed to go with quite heavy, powerful, um, you know, fish dishes. Uh, yeah. Good um, sort of poultry, a bit of ethnic cooking, all of that type of thing. This wine yeah. could go with. Yeah. Really interesting. Great acidity and balance. I think in the wine. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So we're moving on. So, well, uh, yes, indeed. Um, now we we'll go to Rosie. Um, this is the Wild Boar Rosie from um, Chateau Rutas, um, owned by a Scotsman, by the way, Sir David Murray. And um, this is a, a Provence Rosie. Um, Provence arguably makes the best Rosie, I'd say, anywhere in Europe, mm -hmm. potentially in the world. And um, I think we should just try this one yeah. next, if that's all right. So Provence is one of those areas where rosé is made according to very traditional methods in the sense that uh, a blending of white and red wine is absolutely not allowed. Um, so it's also a blend of grape varieties, I think, Billy, is that right? Yeah, we have Grenache coming into to, to this wine and, you know, it's, it's a style of wine that um, is made by Seigne or um, just the, the first run of pink out of the red grapes. Yeah. So as you say, Peter, it's not a blending exercise. This is the, the top quality juice that comes out of the initial blend of, of the run of grapes. So this is made by a Scotsman? Well, this is made by a Frenchman, but ah, the vineyard okay. is owned by a Scotsman. Uh, it's the old line, is it? <laughs> well, it's, it's more than that. It's one of our wines that we call Scottish Connections. Uh, we have a range of wines, uh, interesting wines that have strong Scottish connections. Yeah. And of course, in Scotland, that's a great uh, selling angle. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, so David Murray, um, who owns um, uh, this vineyard, is a great wine man himself and uh, loves this wine. It's Good, fabulous. excellent. 
but it's very fresh nose. I think you sort of get raspberries, strawberries, uh, that sort of idea, plus a little bit of spiciness there. He's more of a professional I am with the, on the spitting department, I can tell you that. It's much more direct. He's got a bit more experience, I think, uh, in that way. Thank you. Um, again, I think on, on the palette, this is absolutely lovely. Uh, I really like it. It's got a nice, fresh style. Um, and it is, it's right up my street, certainly, because it is, it is dry. Uh, there's not that, um, that kind of jammy sweetness that you sometimes get in a rosé. Um, I think it works really well. Yeah, I mean, I find this type of rosé um, doesn't have any dr uh, sweetness added no. to it. It's a food wine, yeah. and if you go and visit the Provence area, and um, you know many Brits do, mm -hmm. uh, this is the typical wine that you will find in the local restaurant, which complements all the lovely French food in yeah. that area. Right, the, um, the final wine then is the uh, Neprica from uh, Tormaresca. Uh, it's a southern Itali Italian blend from uh, a region called Puglia. So if you imagine the, the heel of Italy, uh, that's where you're looking uh, very much in the south. 2008, um, so building poor. Um, what's special about this one? Well, this is uh, a property that's owned, of course, by the great uh, Italian wine dynasty of Antinori. And um, the beauty about blending in the, the grape varieties, um, Negro Amara uh, is a traditional grape variety from the south of Italy. Uh, Primitivo, uh, big, soft, fat style of um, uh, variety. And some think uh, is the Zinfandel of uh, California. And of course Cabernet Sauvignon, which gives, a, gives the wine backbone. Yeah. So you're getting a blend of um, different flavours and tastes and styles to make this wine complete, a yeah. whole wine. And I think you'll see this uh, in, okay. in the stomach. It's probably a very hot region. It's a very hot region, yeah. yes. yes. And you've got to be very careful because one grape variety offers you one style, whereas by blending in three, you have um, a much more on the palate or the palate of the painter or the blender. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> uh, you mentioned Antinori because they're quite a, an important wine family in Italy, right. aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're fortunate to be the agent for Antinori in Scotland and um, I mean they, they make undoubtedly some of the greatest wines. If you look at this wine actually, uh, out of the, uh, well, the, the two reds that we're, um, we've got here, this is by far the darkest, the deepest in colour. Um, and I think you know Cabernet Sauvignon itself is a quite thick skinned variety, so that gives a lot of colour. Negro Amaro, it's actually in the name as well, isn't it? Mm, it's kind of yeah. like black and, and sort of bittersweet, I think is the, yeah, the sort bit of cherry type style, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah that's um, right. And then Primitivo again, uh, as, as Billy said, it's the, the kind of Zinfandel in, uh, in California, but makes fantastic wines in, um, in Puglia. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to trying this. So initially, you know, on the nose we get the sort of black cherry yeah. type, um, slight um, plum style. Well, thanks very much for your time, Billy, and uh, like showing us uh, some of the uh, the wines uh, that you've chosen for Hit Scotland. Uh, I have to say I'm very impressed. Um, some really interesting wines. Um, if someone wanted to find out a little bit more about uh, these wines in particular, where would they go? Well, you can visit the Hit Scotland uh, website, which is hitscotland.org. Um, and you'll find more about hits if you want to talk about that. If you're wanting to find out about the wines, then visit wine-importers.net. I've got to remember to, to, to mention, but if you just Google wine importers, you'll find us fairly quickly. Fantastic. Wine importers cover all sectors of the market in Scotland, right from the very top hotels right down to the corner shop. Yeah. So we cover all sectors and only too, help, only too glad to help anybody. Fantastic. It's been great working to, to, today to, to talk about these wines and drive them through. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Cheers. Cheers.